Hello, Gold here. And it's been a while since I've done a robot programming video, but I want to start doing a lot more of these. And I want to start with the very basics of it. Um, make sure to, uh, if you can, if you like the videos, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Um, hit that like button. Turn on notifications. Uh, the, the more people that watch these, the more inclined I am to actually continue through the process of covering the entire teach pendant and all aspects of programming not just these abbs here but also kukas and some other types of robots too but we're going to start off with abbs i'm going to cover the very basics of jogging today I'm going to look at how to jog in the joint coordinate system or basically joint mode first of all i've got my simulator pulled up here and i'm going to go to my quick set menu now there's two ways I can change my jog modes on this. One way to change my jog mode is using my quick set menu. Another way to change my jog mode is to use my shortcut buttons right here on the teach pendant. These are hard keys, they don't change. So if I press this one, notice I'm jogging axis one through three right now. If I press it, that changes me to axis four through six. Now one, I guess I don't want to call it a disadvantage, but one thing about an ABB that's different than some other types of robot and that's when you're in the joint mode to jog joint specific here then it's only going to allow you to jog either axis one two and three or axis four five and six so you have to alternate between these two you know jog modes here i can also change this jog mode by tapping my quick set button here and going to my jog modes up here and on my jog modes up here i simply select by tapping there let's go back and do that again quick set to the little robot here. I select whatever coordinate. This is your coordinate system selection button right here. I tap it and it'll open up this menu right here. And on this menu, I basically have uh, three options, but really it's broken down into four. I have two joint specific modes or joint modes, axis one through three or axis four through six. I also have a linear and a reorientation mode that we're gonna look at in other videos. But we're going to focus on the axis specific modes here and what we can expect when we use these features. So I'm going to start off with axis one through three here. I selected it there. Now we know we could have went to this button and I could have said tapped it a couple times until I see axis one through three here. So now I'm going to move the pendant out of the way and we're going to look at this little robot here. So for those that aren't uh, familiar with it, those that aren't familiar with, uh, you know, an ABB robot, or robots in general, let's look at what the different axes mean. When we say axis one, that's not the big part down here, that's the joint. That's where this part here, which is called the uh, base frame, joins to this part right here, that's called the rotating column. And the seam where they join together here is axis one. And that allows this entire robot arm to rotate around this base down here. So axis one is at the base. Axis two is right here. This part right here is called the link arm. The link arm joins the rotating column here to form axis two right here. And that'll move the robot sort of clockwise and counterclockwise forward and back almost if you wanna look at it that way. This part up here, this is called the arm of the robot. Even though technically when we talk about robots, we say the robot arm. And when a lot of people say that, they mean the entire robot. But this is technically the arm uh, the rest of it is its own components. Base frame, rotating column, link arm, arm, and then the wrist of the robot. All right, so the arm joins the link arm right here to form axis three. And that moves the wrist up and down. And we're gonna demonstrate that in a moment. Here, we have the wrist. This whole component here is one unit and it's called the wrist of the robot. And it consists of axis four right here where it joins to the arm, axis five, right through here, axis five, and then axis six is the actual flange of the robot, the very end that we mount the tool on. This is what we mount the tool to. You'll hear a lot of people refer to the flange also as, as null tool, N-U-L-L -L tool, or also as tool zero. This is the tool zero. This is the default tool for every ABB robot. And this is the point right here it's going to rotate. All this is going to do is rotate around. And the whole design, the whole purpose of that is so that we can rotate the tool clockwise and counterclockwise. Now, jogging in joint mode. 
very easy to do jogging in joint mode on my simulator here I simulate it I do it by turning my motors on and engaging this this enable button on my simulator simulates the dead man on the back of the teach pendant so I want to make sure my motors are enabled and my dead man is engaged the dead man is a three position switch a lot of people this is technically called the enabling device or enabling circuit and some people will call it the enabling switch and the first position is if I do not touch the dead man on the back of the pendant if it's fully disengaged that leaves my motors on circuit open I cannot get power to the robot motors when I pull the dead man into the middle position to the first click that closes that motor zone circuit and allows power to now be supplied to the robot motors. The third position is if I squeeze it all the way into the bottom. If I squeeze the dead man all the way into the bottom, then that once again opens that motor zone circuit and kills motors for my robot or kills power to my robot's motors. So to jog in these modes, just going to do a quick demonstration here. I'm in axis one through three. I've got my dead man pressed. I got my motors on. So now I just use my joystick. So with my joystick, I'm just gonna press this way and we see that we are moving axis one. Right here. Left and right on your joystick. We'll move axis one counterclockwise and clockwise. Next, I'm gonna move axis two. If I press up on the joystick, then it sort of moves it up in a way. It moves it back is the way I look at it, which is counterclockwise from the, the center of the axis two here. And I move it back down. And it's going to move that way. Now notice how as I'm doing that, if you haven't jogged and joint before, you'll notice that as I rotate that axis, all this just follows along with it. It doesn't move independently. And that's the advantage of the other, other jog modes that we have. This is the most restrictive jog mode. And what I mean by that is it, it's not really designed for me to write robot programs using joint mode. It's not very efficient, but it is good when I have to put the robot at its calibration position or when I have to put the robot, you know, and just tweak a little position here or there. It's good for that. So up moves axis to counterclockwise, down moves axis to clockwise. So our final directions are rotating rotating the joystick so if I rotate here it's going to move and you notice the arrow here it's moving our axis 3 counterclockwise and now it's moving our axis 3 clockwise now keep in mind when I'm saying counterclockwise and clockwise I'm talking about from the zero position of the axis if I were standing on the other side of the robot it would look the opposite but it would still be moving the same way All right. so now that I've jogged those Maybe I need to jog axis four, five, and six. To do that, I can I can change my jog mode here. Can do it one of two ways: quick set, axis four through six. There we go. So I can do it now, or I could have pressed my shortcut key right here and got my axis four through six here. So now I just follow the same procedure. Left and right will move axis four, as we see. Remember, left and right is your lowest number. Up and down is your middle number. Rotating the joystick is your highest number. So left or right, if I was in one through three, is axis one. Up and down, axis two. Rotate, axis three. Now I'm in four through six. Left and right, four. Up and down, five. Rotate for six. All right, so if I want to move five, notice how five moves. All it does is really just move the flange up or down. And as we can see here, now, as we notice in this position, when I press up, it literally rotates that axis upwards, moving axis six upwards. And it's important to remember it's not always going to do that. Depends on the configuration of the robot, because watch now if I rotate axis four around this way and a dead giveaway that it's going to go opposite of what I expect is those letters ABB are upside down. If those are upside down. Then I know when I press up on this, it's now going down. If I press down, it's now going up. So we want to keep that in mind. All right, so I'm just going to rotate it this way. And I'm going to move this axis 5 on over here so that we can see axis 6 and watch it rotate when I use my twist my joystick. I'll twist my joystick. 
counterclockwise and it rotates axis six counterclockwise and clockwise and it rotates axis six clockwise. You can on a real robot, notice how I'm pushing the directional arrow, I'm moving the direction. I can move more than one axis simultaneously. I can move more than one. And what I did right here is I got an error. Let me show you the error I got. The position for Rob 1, that's my robot, joint Rob 1 axis 4 is out of working range. So it's telling me exactly what the problem is right there. And that's one of the advantages of the error system on the AVBs. They've got a pretty good system. I like it anyway. So this message, I'm just going to acknowledge it. I know that I went the wrong way. So I'm just going to try and bring axis 4 back the other way. I went the wrong way again. I need to go this way with it. And now I'm out of the error. Now you can also, that's called superposing motions. I can press diagonal on the joystick. It's really hard to do on the simulator, but I can press diagonal and twist or rotate my joystick at the same time, and it'll move all three of these axes simultaneously. Like right here, we only see two. I'm going to try. It's not going to let me on here. But we can do the same thing with uh, axis one through three here. If I press diagonal, notice I'm moving. Look at there. I'm moving axis one and two. Let's move them back. Now that might look like an efficient way to move the robot, but it's unpredictable. Remember, axis mode is made for those small little tweaks, uh, zero positioning, or I should, I should say calibration positioning for the robot and things like that. All right, well, I hope the uh, video helps out. Uh, I'm gonna have some more jogging videos coming out and we're gonna look at some tools and things like that. And I really wanna take the ABB system and I want to break this down one video at a time, step by step, covering every single aspect of programming this. But I also want to make sure that people are going to watch the videos and I don't just waste a lot of time with something no, nobody watches. But uh, thanks a lot for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Throw a like, a subscribe, share the video if you can. Uh, the more subscribers we get, the more videos I'm going to make. So thanks a lot. I uh, hope you have a good day. Hope it helps. For now, gold out.